What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. I've been on YouTube for a while, I'll say that. Been a lot of change, some good, some bad, but one thing that's always seemed to stay the same was the like to dislike bar. Well, maybe that's a stretch, because there was a time when the like to dislike ratio was actually red and green and not black and white. I actually remember when there was a video with, with more dislikes than likes, you'd see comments in the comment section that would say, Nice lightsaber. Oh wait, that's just the dislike bar. Good times, man. Back when the internet was less centralized, you could pretty much do and say anything. No rules, man. That's how we liked it. Back then, we were kings. We could do as we pleased. Regardless, the like to dislike bar really never done changed. And why would it? It's simple. It shows you how much people liked the video and how much people didn't like it. It really is simple, but it's instrumental to the way YouTube works. You see a video that has a positive like to dislike ratio, then you know it might be a video worth watching, whether it's a review, tutorial, something like that. But if the ratio is contested or heavily disliked, well, that's when you know something's up. It's really helpful for determining whether a video might or might not be good at a glance. We've had this feature for years and we liked it. But now, well, looks like that's gonna change. You might have heard that YouTube is gonna hide dislikes from videos, and this ain't exactly new actually. Back in March of 2021, YouTube hinted that they might be removing dislike visibility, and well, surprise surprise, no one liked it. Believe it or not, people don't really take too kindly to removing a fundamental feature to a site, who knew? But, well, Tom went on, people forgot about it, because, well, let's face it, Tom moves at a breakneck pace here on the internet, but, like an ex-girlfriend, it crept back on us. YouTube released a video to their own channel announcing that they're serious about removing the dislike count. Let's take a look. Hey folks, you may have seen a while back that YouTube announced it was experimenting with making dislike counts private to only the creator of the video. Now, if you're like me, you were surprised by that. I mean, I've always thought seeing the number of dislikes on a video helps us know as viewers if it's a good video or not, if it's a helpful tutorial or not or if what a creator is is saying in their video is generally agreed with or not. See, you've always thought that because that's literally how it works. The like dislike bar is a helpful indicator for determining whether or not a video is worth taking seriously or even watching. It's always been, it always will. But unfortunately, research teams at YouTube have found there's this whole other use for disliking a video that I had never experienced as a creator, and you may not have either. Apparently, groups of viewers are targeting a video's dislike button to drive up the count, turning it into something like a, a, a game with a visible scoreboard. Really? It took a research team to figure this out? Shoot, you could have just asked me, and I would have told you that, yeah, stuff like this does happen. Like, this guy says it as if it's some sort of revelation, when there have probably been people doing this for years. Here's the thing, though. Targeted dislike, like what this guy's describing are, like, they happen. I've seen it go on, but it's an uncommon occurrence. Most of the time, when you see a video's ratio, it's the true, honest-to-God ratio. Don't try to spin it, you snake. You're trying to pass it off as if the exception is the rule, or at least, prominent enough to be a problem. You know why we've never seen creators rally to combat targeted dislike campaigns? Well, it's simple. It's not a big enough issue to care about. And it's usually just because they don't like the creator or what they stand for. That's a big problem when half of YouTube's mission is to give everyone a voice. Now, I defy you to tell me how dislikes take away someone's voice. If a video gets mass disliked, well, you can still make videos, same as always. You still got your voice, you can still speak out about crap. And the reasoning here makes no sense at all. YouTube was made to give people a voice, but then you're actively taking away the voice of the average viewer, but not allowing their dislikes to be shown. And why? Because some people use the feature to be a-holes? Look, it's not a perfect system, but that don't mean it's gotta go. So, earlier in 2021, YouTube experimented with making the public dislike count private to see if it would help reduce these coordinated dislike attacks across the platform. And after analysis, they did see a reduction. All right, I'm convinced. The people who work at YouTube, they gotta have brain damage or something because the reasoning for this is obvious. If you make a feature useless and not worth using, people ain't gonna use it. It has nothing to do with dislike raids, it's that you remove the point of disliking a video, so no one's gonna do it. Again, if you make something not worth doing, people ain't gonna do it. Now, a few common questions we saw from the initial experiment. First, without a public dislike count, how can viewers tell if a video is worth watching? Again, I kind of had this question too, but it turns out that while 
viewers might use the dislike count to give them a sense of a video's worth. When the teams looked at the data across millions of viewers and videos in the experiment, they didn't see a noticeable difference in viewership, regardless of whether they could see the dislike count or not. In other words, it didn't really matter if a video had a lot of dislikes or not, they still watched. Wop that smug grin off your face, you fink. Now, let's say what this guy is saying is true, which I personally contest, but no, whatever. Let's say that people see the like to dislike bar, see that there's more dislikes than likes, but continue to watch the video. Well, there's explanations for that. They might want to see why the video is bad. They might want to see why people don't like it. If it's a video like a review or a tutorial, they might apply the ratio to key moments in the video. As simple as that, really. You can't just say, well, the feature is useless, so let's just remove it. Because, I mean, not only is that just dumb, straight up, it's not even true. That's all the video really has to say that I care enough to respond to. There's more, but nah. To be honest, the video just feels like a lot of sidestep and just really weak reasoning and generalizations to justify making a change that no one wants. Look, YouTube literally has the option to disable ratings and comments, which, funnily enough, they don't really address in the video. But yeah, if creators are so butthurt about it, just let them use that option. Now look, hiding your ratings and comments, it's not respectable. It's a bitch move, but there's no reason that everyone else should have to suffer because a few crybabies on YouTube are upset at their ratios. Hell, I've said it before on this channel, and I'll say it now. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Part of being an entertainer is, you'll make people hate you. One way or another, people are gonna grow to dislike you. It's happened to everyone else, and hey, it might happen to me too. If you can't handle it, you've got no business being a YouTuber. Hell, you've got no business being on the internet. If you're gonna let words from a stranger or a like to dislike ratio get to your head, you ain't got no business in this space. And that's the thing too. Comments are still a thing. Are you gonna force everyone to disable comments since those can cause stress and embarrassment too? I mean, we might as well be consistent here. Hell, if ratings are disabled, people might be more inclined to leave a negative comment, so arguably, you might be making the quote-unquote problem worse. Besides, you can hide ratings and comments too, but you can't do much to hide sentiment. If a video's bad enough, People will make videos about it. They'll post about it on Twitter and other social media. One way or another, people are gonna express their opinion on a video. In effect, this change is as useless as it is dumb. Now a lot of people have been speculating on this, and I can't help but agree. YouTube pushes this as a change that'll protect smaller creators, but I think they're doing it to protect bigger media outlets. News channels like MSNBC and ABC News and other channels like The White House and Saturday Night Live, not to mention commercials uploaded to YouTube by other companies, are all channels and videos that routinely receive poor reception. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these companies complain to YouTube directly, because it's bad for PR. They don't want us to be able to tell them how we really feel about them. To them, I say fooey. We ought to be able to say what we please in any way we wish. This ain't TV. Average Joes like you and I have a voice, and by God, we gotta keep it that way. This video received heavy backlash. You can see that in both the ratings and comments alike. Even the biggest YouTubers are coming together to denounce this change. You know, it's weird because usually YouTubers are just at each other's throats all the time over tiny little stuff. But every time that YouTube makes a brain dead update or change, it unites all of us against their brain dead decisions. Y'all almost love to see it. Hopefully, the response will be enough to convince YouTube that this is a horrible change. Hell, we've seen them pitch awful ideas and then scrap them when they get rejected by the community, so it's not even out of the question, necessarily. That being said, I'm not holding my breath. YouTube is notoriously out of touch, so they'll probably force it through anyways. Even if this gets overturned and the idea gets scrapped, which is the most desirable outcome, I ain't forgiving YouTube for nothing. This shouldn't have ever been announced as an update ever. The fact that this is an idea that made it this far is absolutely laughable. I don't get it, man. YouTube is a company worth billions upon billions of dollars, yet they can't figure out what the community wants and doesn't want. Even when we make it clear that we don't like their changes, they push them and they force them into until they get their way. What a shame that such a great platform like this is constantly bombarded by bullcrap. I don't got much to say other than that though. That's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.